Awesome. Thanks for clicking on this video. So a quick like disclaimer before I start. My dog is here sleeping on my bed and he is a loud sleeper. He snores. Um, so throughout the video you might hear him snore. So just wanted to say if you hear anything like, what's that? It's him sleeping. See? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so this is going to be a video consisting of um, my surgery, what I did to repair, why I need surgery and stuff like that. Um, and what I need surgery on. So this is going to be the uh, pre-op video, I guess. Um, and then surgery day, I'll try to record. And then I'll also be doing uh, post-op uh, videos of the surgery and stuff like that. Um, and my recovery and stuff like that. And keep everyone updated. Only because I was looking for this type of uh, content um, just to inform me and, you know... I just wanted to see it and there wasn't a lot out there so I thought I'd do it for myself and I'd do it for people on YouTube that are about to uh, you know experience this or just want to be curious whatever um so yeah so that's what this video will be about if you're interested to hear my whole story and you know hop on this little journey with me then keep on watching all right so today is May 13th 2017 this is a Saturday and I'm getting my surgery on May 16th, 2017, and that is on a Tuesday. Um, so I'm getting surgery on my ACL and my meniscus. I am getting them repaired or reconstructive surgery because I no longer have an ACL at all. So I can't even say I'm repairing it because there's nothing to repair because there's nothing there. Um, and for my meniscus, the doctor said he's going to try to repair it. Uh, and if not, he's going to have to cut the part that needed to be cut. I don't know yet. I can't even tell you until after the surgery when he tells me what he did. Um, so I guess a little background on how I did it. Um, so for my ACL, my ACL has been torn already for two and a half years now. Almost three years now. Um, yeah. I tore it about three years ago. It was before I was going to be entering my senior year in high school. And it was just not a good experience. Oh, goodness. Um, and there's not even like a big explanation for it. Most people tear their ACL um, during like sports and stuff. Uh, but I'm not sporty at all. And I don't, I wasn't even playing a sport when I did this. So it's kind of, yeah, like my luck. Wow. Um, I was, I pretty much just jumped in the air. And when I landed, it was just downhill from there. I heard a pop and I fell. Um, but when I went to get it checked out, the doctor's like, Oh, uh, he's like, you need an MRI. So I got an MRI because he was saying that um, there was nothing wrong with it or something. And I'm like, no, there's something wrong with my knee. I heard the sound. So we got an MRI and he's like, okay, yeah, you tore your ACL. It is not. <laughs> he was like, it's not even like, I don't even know where it went. I don't know either. But um, I'm like, okay, yeah, I had to get the surgery. Cool. And I just never did it. And after about like a week two weeks maybe a month tops i was fine i could walk um i could do everything with my knee the only thing is it's it wasn't stable because your acl keeps your knee from pivoting and from it just keeps it stable like ugh, it's just a nightmare but i didn't want to get the surgery because i was about to finish high school and i couldn't afford to be out two or three weeks to recover and then have six months to take it easy and a lot of things were happening in high school i had a lot of things i needed to do uh, and then and gym and blah, blah blah I just couldn't afford it um, so uh, then I'm like okay I mean, I'll get it soon and then college rolled around and I'm like well I don't have time because I have my nice classes and you know college is important so I just never got the surgery now with not having an ACL again like I said my knee is very fragile so at work or if I'm just walking or if I'm just standing at the checkout line at any store here and there he is having a good sleep. Anyways, here and there, my knee will give out because I don't have, you know, the stable, that stable piece to keep my knee together. Like, and it, it's the worst pain ever. Like, I wouldn't even, like, wish it on my enemy. Like, oh, no, I would. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, so again, fast forward to three years, March 2017. I had a low bed. I now have a new higher bed. You probably don't even tell the difference, but my bed, if I were to record uh, previously, would not even be seen in the shot because it was so low. Um... Yeah, I did the wrong step when I stepped on the bed and pop pop, I fell and I'm like, 
this again. But I didn't think anything of it because like I said, my knee would pop here and there. So I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. Um, so I'm like, let me give this about like a half hour, an hour. It only takes a couple minutes, but this is really painful. So I'm like, let me give it a little more time. I sit, I'll eat it. Let me sleep. Let me take some medicine, like some Advil or something, and I'll be good. Um, so it's now the next day, and I am still in pain. And I'm like, why am I still in pain? This is not normal. Um, so I was a little worried, honestly. I'm like, oh my god, what if I broke something? Because I couldn't move my knee at all. I couldn't even use the bathroom without crying. That's how bad it was. So I'm like, oh, what if I just, what if I broke something or what if like I fracture something? I was so nervous. I'm like, I can't do this right now. I'm almost done with my semester, with the spring 2017 semester. I can't, I have like a month left. I can't do this now. Um, um, so I'm like, I need to go to the hospital just to see what's wrong. So I know my time and what I need to do so I can finish school. I'm just like, oh, well, we don't know. We're not gonna give you any tests, but just go see your orthopedics. And put some ice on it. And I'm like, I could have told myself that. I could have self diagnosed myself, and that's what you were gonna tell me. Thank you for taking $70 to tell me what I already knew. Like, I already knew all this. I just wanted to see what was wrong with it. Did I break something? Take an x ray, take a MRI, whatever you had to do. I don't care. Just take something to figure out what's wrong. She didn't even, the lady didn't even touch my knee. She's just like, let me see it. She's like, oh wow, it looks bruised. And I'm like, oh wow, does it? Uh huh. <laughs> But whatever, so I made an appointment with my orthopedics and they took forever to give me an appointment. And I'm like, listen, I am in school. I can't walk right now. And luckily I was on, what break were we on? We were on spring break. So I'm like, luckily I have like another few days to get this situated and hopefully my knee will cooperate with me. And I'm like, listen. I can't wait a whole another week because I have to walk. And my campus is not one building. It's building and building and building and building. So I have to do a lot of walking and I can't afford to not go to school. They're like, okay, we'll call you back if the doctor can see you earlier. So instead of it being a week out, which would be after spring break, they would see me the Tuesday or whatever. I don't remember what day it was. They would see me the, a few days before spring break started again. Yes. So excited. So I go and the doctor's like, well, you tore your ACL. I'm like, yes, I know. I tore it three years ago. Look at the charts. Sorry. Uh, he's like, so you need surgery on that. I'm like, so I heard. He was like, well, I think you might have, you know, torn your meniscus, or I'm scared that you might have torn your meniscus, but let's take an MRI to double check that. A whole week later, I get the MRI, and at this point, I'm going to school, but I'm using crutches, and I hate using crutches. Oh, it's just so much walking. I don't have any upper body strength. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not athletic at all, so it was just like, it was the worst. And I'm still, I'm not really on crutches now because I can walk without it. It hurts and I limp, but I just can't use the crutches. I'm about to be on crutches for the next month, two months. I'll pass on the crutches for a few days. <laughs> no. Um, so I'm like, yay. So I get the MRI and uh, it takes another few days to get into the office. Why does it take so long? Um, so the doctor called me and I'm like uh, so what is it and he was like oh so yeah you tore your meniscus it is a buckle a bucket handle medial meniscus tear I think I said that right um so he's like we can either save your menis your the part that's you know torn of the meniscus or I might have to cut it I don't know yet he said he won't know until he goes in for surgery so I can't even tell you guys what the outcome was with that until surgery day um I was going to school seven days a week or no five days a week <laughs> um and i was also going to work for three days a week <sighs> it was hard but i did it i had to because i was going to be out for a whole two months pretty much i work so i'm like let me just get some work out get some money but then after like after like two weeks i'm like i can't do this i, I can't do this at all yeah. some tips that the doctor told me for my surgery and um, what we're gonna be doing. I, guess, I don't really know what we're doing because I'm not a doctor, but just what I've seen and what I've heard him say, I don't know. I've been watching YouTube videos. So um, he said he's going to take, he said it was my decision. I could use a cadaver. Uh, um, I could use my patellar tendon or I can use my hamstring. He said he doesn't recommend the cadaver only because I'm still young, so we can use my hamstring. Um, it'll heal faster and things like that. And he doesn't recommend, I think he said he didn't recommend the patellar tendon because it 
hurts more and it's harder to heal i don't know i'm like listen just go with the hamstring that sounded like the perfect thing and when i watched the videos it looked like it was not as bad because the, the cuts that you made i just go with the hamstring just so they're gonna be taking my hamstring uh some hamstring out of my left knee which is what i which is where the acl and the meniscus are torn in my neck and my left knee he's going to do it and endose and and those scrap scrap I don't know the word I don't know mm, look it up it's basically they're just gonna make a few slits in my knee and they're gonna do everything inside my knee and those scrap I don't know how to say it I don't know but they're gonna be do everything they're not gonna cut my whole knee open and do it like that which I thought that's probably dumb of me but I thought they were gonna cut my whole knee open and work and sew me up and I'm like oh my god I'm gonna have a big scar but nope I'm okay with them doing it inside they gave me some pads, some cleaning pads, to clean my knee off the day before surgery. They're like, when you take a shower the night before, wait 30 minutes for your skin to dry, and then use these pads and wipe your knee. It'll, you know, it'll sterilize it even more for when you get here. So, I'm like, okay, can I put lotion on? And they're like, no, don't put lotion. And I'm like, I'm black. I need to put lotion on. I get so, and I have such dry skin. I need lotion. Like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I'm so upset. I'm like, well, can I put lotion on my hands? Because my hands get really ashy. She's like, no, you don't. Don't put any lotion on. I'm like, I'm about to be so ashy. My hands get dry. My feet get dry. My knees get dry. I'm just going to be one dry, ashy motherfucker. Whatever. Um, so, I already went to take my blood work. And... I spoke with the anesthesiologist. She asked me if I wanted to be if I want to be sleep or if she wants me to give if I want uh, epidural in my spine and then be sedated. And I'm like, doesn't that mean I'll be awake? She's like, yeah, yeah, but you'll be sedated, so you won't really remember. I'm like, no, put me to sleep. I'll sleep for the two hours. The surgery is gonna be two hours. The doctor said it usually takes an hour to repair each of them, but I'm doing them together, so it's gonna be, take two hours. So I'm like, no, I'll go to sleep. I'm gonna need to sleep and I wanna wake up and be like, oh, did I get the surgery yet? Not sitting there like, is it done yet? Because I'm still awake, I'm good. Um, I'm not nervous, well I am nervous, but my fear is actually kind of unrealistic. I'm more scared to die than anything else of the whole surgery. <laughs> Which is unrealistic and it's probably not even, it shouldn't even be a fear of mine, but that's just my fear in life is to die. So I just fear that like, I watch too much Grey's Anatomy. A lot of them, like, they die. And, like, why did you die? Like, you just got surgery to be fixed. How? I don't know. But it's only my knee. It's not like I'm getting, like, heart surgery or anything. So it's like, I shouldn't be this scared. But I am. Bite me. Eh, I don't know. Uh, I'm also really scared of the IV. Because when I got my wisdom teeth out, they could not put the IV in for nothing. And it hurt so bad. But it's like, they already drugged me. They already gave me all these drugs so that... I was loopy but I still felt it and it still hurt and I was like oh my god so it's like I'm, I don't think they're gonna drug me when they give me the IV so it's like I'm gonna be in a lot of pain because I hate needles I, uh, they say don't wear metal but that's obviously apparent um, I had to buy some silicone tunnels because I have I'm at a zero gauge right now and my ears are closing fast like if I take these tunnels out and don't put them back in for a whole day my ears will probably shrink down to like a, a six gauge and I don't want that because it took me a while to get here so I had bought me some silicone tunnels for my uh, ears and I also bought um, I guess they call them retainers your earrings or something I don't know but plastic little plugs for my cartilage but it hurts so I just put my earring back in and I might not even wear those things I might just you know get the earring out I don't know the day of the surgery I will record again uh, I'm nervous I'm excited I'm ready to have a working knee it'll take six months to heal but uh, I don't know. I need it, so I can't walk. I can. I mean, I can walk, but I have to limp. I just. It's like I've been like this for almost three months now, and it's like I don't remember what it's like to walk normal. It'll take six months to fully recover, but my doctor said after four, four to six weeks, I should be able to be on my feet again. Uh, which is good because in two months I'm going on vacation, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I need to be on my feet again. <laughs> um, yeah. So if you want to keep updated on my road to recovery and my ECL and meniscus surgery and go ahead and subscribe to this channel um yeah
other than that okay well thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video oh you that bitch when you cause all this conversation always stay gracious best revenge is your paper